Skeletal System, Chapter 6. Today's date is February 26th, right? 27th. All right. The functions of the skeleton. Several different functions. They support the body. If you look at somebody when they're standing, your lower limbs are going to support the, the rest of your body. Your rib cage would support what? And protect what? Right. Uh, so the pelvic girdle, I'm sorry, said that bass backwards. The pelvic girdle supports the abdominal cavity. The rib cage would protect all your internal organs. It also protects soft body parts. The skull protects the brain. You find that humorous? Have y'all ever heard that? Have y'all ever heard that term before? All right. Also, the skeletal system produces the red blood cells. All bones in the fetus have red blood cells, but only certain bones in adults have red bone marrow. Skull, ribs, sternum, vertebra, iliac crest, and ends of long bones. Besides the ends of long bones, can you see something kind of familiar about the rest of these? Think about those bones. <laughs> Besides, they're protective bones. What about the shape of them? The majority of them are flat bones. So all your flat bones are going to be filled with the red marrow. Mm, from what I can remember, all will and then the ends of your long bones will have the red marrow. They store minerals and fats. All bones have matrix with calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate is a source for calcium ions and phosphate ions. Fat is stored in the yellow marrow. And where is yellow marrow located? Very good. The medullary cavity. So fat is stored in the medullary cavity. Um, your bones permit flexible body movement all along the muscles, and articulations occur between all bones. Ready? All right, there are 206 bones. Heads up, there are 206 bones in an adult skeleton. Would you like to learn all 206 or the uh, 43 that I had, y'all? You sure? When you get to take anatomy in college, you will more than likely get to learn all 206. And instead of being attached to the skeleton, they will each be laid out independently, and you get to pick them up and identify them that way. It was lots of fun. <laughs> I spent many hours becoming intimate with the bones. Uh, the shape of the bones reflect roll within the body. Long bones, like arms and legs, are made mostly of compact bone. Short bones, like bones in the wrists and ankles, are made main, mainly of spongy bone. And we're going to look at some pictures of that here in a second. Flat bones, like ribs and skull, are made of a layer of spongy sandwiched between two thin layers of compact bone. Then you have irregular bones. They're like the butterfly shape of the vertebra. They permit shapes to fit with other bones. So you've got spongy bone and you have compact bone. All right? Say it again. hate it when I... Okay. A would be classified as... A long bone. A long bone is made up of mainly what? Compact or spongy? Compact. B would be classified as a short bone. It would be mainly made up of spongy bone. C would be like the iliac crest, and it would be classified as a flat bone. And the flat bones are made up of? Yes spongy sandwiched between two compact layers. D would be classified as an irregular bone. And E, we didn't talk about that, but they're classified as round bones. 
Uh, round bones or circular, that's correct. Okay, so here is a diagram of a long bone. You'll notice on the end, the end is filled with spongy bone. A spongy bone is what is made up and filled with red marrow. That is the reason when we said that all flat bones make red blood cells, that is because they are filled with spongy bone, which makes up the red marrow. On the diagram here, this would be an example of your spongy bone. I don't know what happens. So as you can see, it's trying to give you the picture of what the spongy bone looks like and next to it would be the compact bone. Let's try it again. This area here is the spongy bone. This area here is your compact bone. Spongy bone is filled with trabeculae. Compact bone is the one that is filled with osteons and lamella. Spongy bones, trabeculae. We'll look at them down on here. We'll come back to that. Compact bone forms the outer layer of all bones and the majority of long bones. So anytime we talk about compact bones, remember we're talking about this area. You labeled these on your pictures where you have the osteons, the caniculi, the osteocytes, all of this area here. All right? This is what comprises the compact bone. If you compare it to the spongy bone here, look at the difference. Can you see? This looks like sponge. But this is very compact. It is filled with a very thick layer of matrix. Now, in compact bone, you have osteons. This is what we consider or uh, refer to as the Haverson system. That is the cylindrical shape with layers of the matrix. Those layers of matrix are called lamella. They're made up of protein fibers and mineral deposits. You're, you have osteocytes. They are located in the lacuna, and they are connected together with the caniculi. So the Haverson system would be considered as one of those. Down inside here in all these little areas, you've got these little canals called canicula. These canals are what connect all the different cells together. Inside each of these canicula, you have got osteocytes. Osteocytes are bone cell or bone cells. Spongy bone. Spongy bone is also called cancellous bone. Bonus points. Also called cancellous bone. It is lightweight but very strong. You have the mesh needle-like bone with large spaces between them. They are filled with trabecula. Trabecula is what makes up the spongy crosshairs, the little bony bars and plates. And that's just the name. That is the name of these, these pieces in here. These bony plates and bars are called trabeculae. Red bone marrow, blood cell formation, stem cells called hematoposis. Um, you refer back up to one second. Hematopoiesis. Poesis, I have a hard time saying that. That is when you're actually having the blood being made. Hemat would be 
blood formation. How much time do we have left, you see? Three minutes. Okay. Very set. Can I go? No. You have the outer perimeter of the long bone. It's very tough. It's made up of fibrous connective tissue, and it's called periosteum. Periosteum, since it is made up of this fibrous connective tissue, is in conjunction with tendons and ligaments. If you think back to when we did the chicken bone, and we'll probably, I'll probably bring those in maybe tomorrow since we'll have some time, since we'll hopefully we'll have some extra time. I want to show you how the periosteum, whenever you try to take and pull that off, it just goes, it connects right up into the tendons okay, and the ligaments. The ends of the long bone are called the epiphysis. The center is made up, we said, mainly of spongy bone and red marrow. The outer area of the epiphysis are made up of hyaline cartilage. Sometimes it is called articular cartilage. The outer area of the bone is also compact bone. The middle area between the epiphysis so with the long bone, you've got these ends, these ends of the 